So here I am, resident Celtics fan, being a downer on this season again. They just beat the Rockets, and I would love nothing more than for this video to look dumb a month from now, but we know how this year is going. And I feel like they might have to trade Kemba Walker in the offseason. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to do that given his injuries, inconsistencies, and contract. I mean, he's played 30 games this year. And if you want to be nice, you could say he's played well in about half of them. But I just don't know what else they can really do to turn this around. Because if you're playing a guy like Kemba, the minutes that you've got to give him, given his contract and status in the league, but he's not good, then you just can't do much with that. I mean, the only other thing I could think of is some crazy sign-in trade with Fournier's contract and Tristan Thompson's expiring and some of their young dudes with, like, four of their picks to get someone. And, okay, maybe that's a possibility this offseason. I'm not banking on that sort of thing being there, but you never know. Uh, so, again, it comes back to Kemba. And, I mean, in a perfect world, you could just find a team who would think that Kemba will make them better. But, given his situation, I don't know if that's a thing. I mean... Yeah, there are some teams who could use an upgrade at point guard. There's the Bulls, for example. But I'm not sure they would want to give up actual stuff. And that's kind of the thought process I have with any team that's going to be trying to win over the next couple of years. Do they think that Kemba would actually make them better? Not really confident in that. So then the next thing you'd look at is teams who are not going to be trying to win over the next couple of years. And the idea is they would be willing to take on his money if you gave them a pick or something which yeah we might be at that point where you have to give a team stuff to take Kemba Walker even then it's a little dicey because there's a chance that Kemba bounces back to being good which based on my Celtics luck with guys leaving yeah that probably happened but so you look at a team like OKC well maybe they could be a team who'd be willing to take on Kemba's contract if you gave them stuff, which that sounds pretty crazy to say you'd have to give a team stuff to take Kemba Walker, but that could be the situation right now. But at the same time, the Thunder need to be bad so they keep their pick next year. If they make the playoffs, it goes to the Hawks. And again, if there's like a slight chance that Kemba could still be good, then that might stop them from doing a move like that. The other thing about a Kemba move is... For the Celtics, I don't think they would just want it to be a complete salary dump. I think they would want to get one or two good players back in return, even if they're more role player type guys. So the team would have to be willing to still give up like some of their dudes. So the picks that the Celtics would be giving them, they'd have to like quite a bit. And if I can get back to OKC, because I think they're the obvious team to think about with this sort of thing, right? They don't really have anyone that I think the Celtics would want, because they're all super young dudes. Or it's uh, Horford, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think the other team in the Western Conference who could be okay with taking on a bad contract is Houston. However, I don't think there's really a move there because they're not going to give you Christian Wood even if you throw a whole bunch of picks at him. And the other guy would be Eric Gordon, which uh, I don't think they should do because I don't think he does much given his injuries and his contract. You know, you'd be in a similar situation even if you'd be like a little cheaper. And so if you go to the Eastern Conference and you think again, what teams could take on money? They're okay with being bad. I feel like it's only probably three over the next couple of years. It's the Magic, the Cavs, and the Pistons. The Pistons, the only guy they have that the Celtics would want is Jeremy Grant. Similar to Christian Wood, don't think you're going to get him no matter how many picks you throw at him. In the case of Cleveland, well, they've already got Sexton and Garland, so I don't really know if they'd want to trade for Kemba. Also, they've got Jared Allen's free agency coming up, so it's not like the Cavs have all the money in the world to just use to take on a bad contract. And then the last one there was the Magic. I mean, if you could promise me that Gary Harris will get back to 15 points a game, then I honestly think Kemba for Harris... Could be something to look at if the Magic are getting probably a pick back from the Celtics. It still sounds crazy to say you got to attach a pick to get off a of Kemba Walker, but it really could be the case. But yeah, I'm not sure there's a move there with the Magic. Unless you arrange some Otto Porter sign and trade, but Otto Porter's not that good. I mean, he's good when he's awake, he's just not awake that often. I can relate. So yeah, that's my Kemba Walker spiel. Again, maybe there's a team that believes Kemba is still good, 
and he can help them out and win and they would actually look at him as like oh we got to give up stuff for him I just I don't know I mean one thing I saw just from scanning Kemba Walker trades on Google this is from Hardwood Houdini somebody suggests Kemba to the Knicks for Kevin Knox Neil Aquina Alfred Payton and then a Knicks first and a Dallas first that is ridiculous there is no way in hell that return is coming for Kemba Walker there was another one which was a three-team deal which had Kemba going to the Clippers and uh, the Pacers sending Miles Turner to the Celtics and Pat Beverly to the Celtics and the Pacers get a whole bunch of first round picks. And I mean, that one at least made me think about it for a little longer, but I don't know. I've also seen it suggested some Kemba to the Pelicans for Steven Adams and like Lonzo coming back to the Celtics. That one is also interesting. The idea is Adams is... Yeah, it's still not a good contract, but Lonzo can just be better. But then the Pelicans would be losing Lonzo and also taking on Kemba's money, so not really sure it's a good move for them. So yeah, uh, I guess to think about the Celtics a little bit more, because I don't know if there's any other trades to really speculate about. There's a decent chance they lose in round one. I mean, maybe they run into the Hornets or the Hawks in a 4-5 matchup, and they'd have a chance there. They run into Miami, they probably lose. If they run to the Nets, Sixers, or Bucks, they definitely lose. And when that happens, I will not be on the internet. Besides for YouTube, because I just... The, the fire Brad Stevens takes will actually make my head explode. This is the other thing I'm going to do. I'm going to admit I was wrong about something. Early in the season, I was fine with the Miles Turner trade not happening. And to this, up to this point, I still don't really know if it could have happened because Charlotte swooped in with the big offer for Hayward and that was it. But I said that their defense would be fine. Defense has not been fine. Miles Turner would have made their defense better. There you go. I was wrong on that one. I still think Turner is a little overrated. I feel like Celtics fans have created him to be like the would-be savior of the team and I don't agree with that at all. I mean, the guy still gets killed by Embiid every time they play. But they would have been better with him. I will agree. The other thing I will say is that Jalen Brown's contract is not as long as you might think it is. He's got three years left. We know how it goes. Two years left, one year left, that's when you start hearing all the stuff. I would prefer not to live in that world. I would like to have complete security in believing Jalen Brown will re-sign with the Celtics in 2025. Because if he's gone, Tatum's probably gone, and then my life is over. Not literally, but you get it. Now, luckily, they've got Time Lord, who is quickly becoming the best player on the Celtics, and that's only a little bit of a joke, so maybe he'll just save the day. 